Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Inji Skander from Marketing Department at Igenix Middle East. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to Embrace session that will be presented by Dr. Luis Navarro. Dr. Luis is the molecular biology specialist in Igenix, Spain. He has worked in the field of human genomics for over 12 years with a focus on disease and reproduction. With a background in biochemistry, he researched the, gen the genetics and epigenetics of neurodegenerative diseases during his PhD at the Institute of Biomedicine in Valencia. Since he has worked in both public and private sectors in Spain and internationally, he has been with the IgenMix Research and Development Department since 2017, where he specialized in reproductive genetics. As integral part of the research team, he devotes his time to, be, to the improvement of tests related to aneuploidy detection, more specifically at present in development of a non-invasive aneuploidy detection method. Thank you, Dr. Luis, for joining us today. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, everyone, for attending this session. Please don't forget to ask any question you want during the session, and Dr. Luis will answer it at the end of the session. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to you, to Dr. Luis. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot, Inji, for your kind introduction. And I would like to thank all the attendees for their time and their interest in this Embrace test. Uh, what I'm gonna discuss today with you, or what I'm gonna explain to you is um, how we have um, developed this non-invasive pre-implantation genetic testing for for aneuploidies and how we, we manage the, the studies we have been conducting and some details about how to work in the lab to perform the EMBRACE test and the main main uh, details of the test. And as, as Inji was already mentioning, I'll be happy to, to answer any question you might have uh, at the end of the presentation. So let's start with it. Um, the EMBRACE test, this non-invasive PGTA approach, is based in the analysis of the cell-free DNA that the embryo is releasing to the, to the media, to the culture drop, where it has been in, in culture when, when it is in the, in the IVF laboratory. Although it is not clear uh, the mechanism and why this cell-free DNA is released, and also it's not clear why, the reason, but what has been observed is that there is cell-free DNA present in this uh, the drop where the embryo is, is cultured. And most uh, importantly, the amount and the quantity of this cell-free DNA increases with the time in culture, reaching the, the optimal point on the day six of embryo development. So EMBRACE is analyzing this culture drop and uh, therefore, the cell-free DNA uh, in this in this uh, drop. Here, I, I I wanted to share with you a, a brief summary of the the main studies that have been already published in the in the topic. As it, most of of the studies or the the first studies were published in 2016, and as you can see, since then, few groups, different groups from all over the world, have been working in this in this topic. Uh, here you have a summary of, of them. In this part on the top of the, of the slide, you have what is called non-invasive, although, uh, as you can see, most of the, of the groups have been doing some kind of manipulation of the embryos. So it's not totally non-invasive. Uh, as you can see, some of them were doing biopsy on day five or they were vitrifying the, the embryos. So although, it is called non-invasive, most of them have been doing some manipulation. You can also see that the concordances, because all the studies were comparing this non-invasive new approach to the gold standard, to the PGTA based in the analysis of atrophectoderm biopsy. The concordances have been a, bit, a little bit broad, and also in this, in this other approach, what is called minimally invasive, uh, minimally invasive PGTA, and in this case, uh, the groups were mixing and they were analyzing a combination of the culture drop plus the blastocoil fluid. In those cases, the, blast, the, the blastosis was collapsed, so the, the media was mixed with the, with the blastocoil fluid. And again, the concordances have been quite variable. 
So this is what uh, has been mo most of the studies published until now. And now I'm going to share with you what we have been doing in, in this field since, since 2000. We started working in it in 2016, approximately. And from then, we have published already three manuscripts. We are still uh, updating or, or improving the, the test, although it's already available, but we, we try to optimize it and also to, to take um, into consideration all the, the details and the comments that some of the centers that are already working with us have to say. So you can see here the first study was published in 2018. Later on, we published the pilot study in 2019. And in 2020, last year, sorry, in last year, we, we already published the interim analysis of this multi-center study. I'm going to briefly describe what we have learned from each of the, of the studies. As you can see here, this is the, the first study published in 2018 in human reproduction. In that point, uh, there weren't so many. There was, there wasn't so much information about about uh, non-invasive PGTA, about uh, cell-free DNA in the culture drop. It was more an idea, so people were trying to to find out what was in this in the culture drop and if it was possible to use that drop to to give a diagnose related to the to the embryo. So in this study, it didn't work very well. So the results weren't very good, but we learned very important things. As you can see in those graphs, uh, on the first one, you can see that uh, when the, we analyzed different culture drops, and as you can see, the amount of DNA was higher in the drops of media. Sorry, I don't know. There is kind of a timing in the slide, sorry, because they are kind of moving without <laughs> my, my intention. So. Sorry if, if some of them are, are, are passed before I finish talking. Sorry for that. As I was saying, uh, here in this, in this study, we learned that when, when the culture drop was in contact with the, with the embryo, the amount of DNA was higher from those samples than in the culture drop that were without contact with the embryo. That seems obvious because the embryo is releasing DNA and that's why only the drops with in contact with the embryo were having a higher amount of DNA. But in that point, not, uh, it wasn't so clear. So that was that we, we learned that. We also learned that the amount of, of DNA in the media was independent of the uh, chromosomal content of the blastocyst. As you can see here, both euploid and aneuploid uh, embryos were releasing the same amount of DNA. And also, the amount of DNA was independent of the sex of the embryo. So that was good. And for example, this, uh, this characteristic here, that both types of uh, blastocysts, euploid and aneuploid, uh, release the same amount of, of DNA, is quite important because although we don't know the mechanism and the reason why cell-free DNA is released, uh, it doesn't look like, based on, the, on this uh, uh, reason, that uh, the release of cell-free DNA is based or is due to a correction, self-correction um, mechanism of the embryo. Because if it's a self-correction, euploid blastocyst wouldn't release as much as aneuploid. But this is a still uh, on debate in the topic. This is what we learned, at least some of the basics. But as I was previously uh, mentioning, the results, the comparison between the, the diagnose based on the culture drop and the diagnose based on the trophectoderm biopsy, as you can see here, the concordance was quite low, only in around 30% of the cases, whereas we observed plenty of maternal contamination and around 10% of non-informative cases. So the results weren't, weren't good, but we learned a lot on what not to do. So that's why we use all this information, all this knowledge, in our second publication, the pilot study published in 2019. In this study, we had a few objectives, as you can see here. Uh, one of them was to improve our IVF conditions and also the analysis protocol for the samples. Also, we wanted to, to check which is the best moment for media collection because in the previous slide, this one here where, you, where I summarize the different studies, uh, some of them were collecting the media on day five, others on day six. So it wasn't very clear. So in this study, we wanted, in this pilot study, we wanted kind of to, to check 
uh, which is the best option. And also we wanted, we wanted to have an idea of the impact of this protocol in the clinical outcome of the samples. So first of all, we, uh, we work, sorry, in this case, we work with a clinic in, in Italy with Genera and we analyze 115 blastocysts. For them, this is a brief uh, summary of the, of the lab protocol, but here you, you have kind of the main aspects of the, of the protocol that uh, we have been working, we have been improving, but some of the basics are still here. So um, it was very important uh, to do extra washes on day four. So, sorry. So on, on we, we work with Genera in this protocol and we decided to not do any change in the first three days, but on day four in the morning, do extra washes. So after them, the, the embryo was placed in a drop of only 10 microliters. And that was the drop that was finally analyzed. And we kept the embryo in this drop of 10 microliters until day five or day six. For as, as all the other studies and in our previous study from 2018, we compared the result of the analysis of the drop with the analysis of the trophectoderm biopsy. We also changed a little bit the way we were uh, analyzing the, the media, because as you can imagine, the amount of cell-free DNA is very low. So our standard protocol for um, NGS for trophectoderm biopsies, as you can see here in this gel, the, convention, the conventional protocol was not giving proper results only for the cases where the, the embryo had been in culture with a culture drop for three days. So and that was not feasible because not everybody is uh, developing, is culturing the, the embryos until day seven. So that's why we modified our analysis um, protocol and as you can see here after the modification in independently of the timing in culture we always can uh, amplify the DNA. So with all those changes we obtained those results. Finally from the 115 blastocysts that started the study we obtained only informative results for both trophectoderm biopsy and, and media in 108. Um, I mean informative, when I mean infor uh, when, what I'm saying informative is, is that we obtain a, the diagnose because in some of the cases the amount and the integrity of the DNA wasn't good enough so we couldn't provide a diagnose. So uh, we divided the results in two groups in depending on the time in culture. So as you can see here, 27 of the samples uh, were from day five and 81 from day six and their results were quite different depending on the timing culture. So uh, for, for day six, all the samples were informative, so we could provide a diagnose for all of them, but for day seven, only in around 82% of the cases, we obtained a diagnose. In addition, the concordance between the trophectoderm and the media was quite different. It was a lot higher in, on day six. You can see 84% 84, 84 of concordance, whereas for day four, five, it was of only the 63% of the cases. So based on that, we decided that it was better to work always with day six, because with day five, in most of the cases, a little bit, a little bit more of 50% of half of the cases, we could provide a, diag a diagnosis, but it wasn't good enough. So that's why we decided, okay, from now onwards, we are gonna work with day six. Related to the clinical outcome, the numbers we, we had for the pilot study weren't very high. So you can, you need to take into consideration that. So those are kind of trends or, or those results can suggest something, but we cannot conclude anything with, with a good reason because the numbers are very low. But at least we saw some trends and you can see that, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna we have here two groups. All the transfers were based on the result of the trophectoderm biopsy. So for that reason, all the transfer, for all the transfers, the trophectoderm biopsy was euploid, but not all the correlated media were euploid. As you can see here, some were euploid and some were aneuploid. What we observed was that when both samples, media and trophectoderm biopsy were concordant for the same embryo, the clinical pregnancy rate was quite good the ongoing, the ongoing implantation rate was quite good and there was no clinical miscarriage. 
Whereas when there was a discordance between both types of samples, trophectoderm and media, you can see that the results were for the ongoing implantation rate was quite lower and there was more uh, clinical miscarriage. So as I just said, those are just trends, but we, are, uh, we have this in mind and in our other studies that we are conducting, we kind of are trying to find out if this is like that or not. Also because we think that uh, if the trophectoderm is and the, as the mechanism why this DNA is released and the reason and is not clear, those indirect facts kind of provide us some extra information about the real biology of the, of the, the embryo. So after this pilot study with only one center, we decided that it was a good idea to check how robust was the protocol. And that's why we started the multi-center study that uh, which interim analysis was published in, in May 2020. And in this case, we work again with the clinic in Italy, with Genera, but we also work with seven other centers from all over the world, you can see here. The structure of the, of the study was quite similar to the pilot. So for the same embryo, we analyzed the atrophectoderm biopsy and the media, and we compared that. And for a subgroup of, of samples, because in, in US, for example, they, they can do it, it's allowed. For a subset of samples, we compare media, trophectoderm, and also the inner cell mass. So, and those are the results we observed. This is only for the comparison between media and trophectoderm biopsy. So, and those are the results for the, the eight centers. Uh, the range is a little bit broad, although you can see that on average we are closer to 80%, but um, I mean, we learned a lot with this, with this study because uh, not all the centers were paying so much attention with, to, the, to the conditions and how to work. That's why you can see that some of them are reaching, very sorry for this timing thing with the slides. Sorry, I, wasn't, I didn't realize I should have deleted. And so as you can see here, for some of the centers, the concordance was around 70%, but some of them were with more than 85%. And we also observed that it was, uh, for example, some of the centers, they were sending batch of samples and we could, we could reach perfectly 90%. But some others, for example, when they had for one patient plenty of, of embryos, they weren't following our indications so properly. And, and the protocol is not, is not so um, difficult. You only need to have a little bit of time, not so much, but just to be cautious, to be, to pay attention to some details and it works. But some, as it was just, an, this was just an, a study, some of the centers when they had plenty of samples from the same patient, as the main result was based on the traffic to the biopsy and the media was kind of an extra, they kind of fall, didn't follow properly the protocol and did it faster. And that's why the concordance, in those cases, we realized that the concordance wasn't so high. But again, we, we were learning a lot with this study. So as you can see here, the concordance was around 80%. And when for this subgroup of, of samples, when where we could compare media, trophectoderm, and inner cell mass, you can see that the concordances are even higher. And between 85, 87% of the cases. So that's very good. And also this kind of tells us that um, the, the origin of the cell-free DNA is, it might not be only from the trophectoderm biopsy because the concordance with the inner cell mass is also quite high. So this is kind of an, an indirect fact that uh, supports the idea that the, the media uh, represents, the cell-free DNA in the media represents the whole uh, content, chromosomal content of the embryo, not only from one compartment. But this is still on debate because we are still not only us, some other groups are still working on that and we need more, more information. But that was a lot of information and very good information. And related to the protocol, as we wanted to check that it's robust and that it, it works and plenty of people can do it following our indications properly. So not all the centers were working with the same media brand. And as you can see here, the concordances were not affected. So there was no significant, statistically significant difference between the different types of, of media. And there was no statistically significant, uh, 
uh, difference between the different types of incubators used. Again, so you can see four types of media, no statistical, statistical difference between them for the concordance, and the same for the incubators. In this moment, we work with a um, conventional incubator, but now uh, we have also the option to work with time lapse. But this I will I will explain it more in detail later on. Um, there are a few aspects of the study that are well, always uh, on debate, and some of all, almost all of the centers feel kind of um, uh, worried at the beginning of uh, with the embrace test, and those two are are summarized here. One of them, as I, I as I previously mentioned, we need that the embryos are cultured until day six because this is that's the moment where where the amount and the quality of the cell free DNA is the better. That's why, and we can provide a proper diagnosis. But of course, we understand this is kind of a change in the standard routine of the centers, and some clinics are afraid. But based in our experience so far, because in none of the none of the eight centers that have been working with us in the multicenter study have observed a, a different a, a difference, a inconvenience. Even uh, I, I cannot show you now because this is still under under revision but some of the one of the centers already sent an abstract comparing the results of uh, their standard routine with this our protocol for for pgta cases and they didn't observe a difference and but there are also some other manuscripts already published that observe that the the ongoing pregnancy rates in vitrified day six blastocysts uh, are the same than today five for all for the euploid embryos. So when the embryos are tested, there is no difference in, in leaving the embryos to day six or, or to day five. And also uh, working with on a small volume, a small culture drop volume, it, it was also a, a kind of a, a, a worry for some of the centers, of course. And again, none of the centers involved in the multicenter study had a problem. And even one of them also published uh, or submitted a, an abstract to, to one of the important congresses worldwide. They didn't observe a difference. And you also have this, this study from 2015 where they even say that it's even better to, to culture in a small drops. For sure, we can, we can discuss more in detail later on in, because for sure you're gonna, you gonna want to have more information about this, but, and, and I'm happy to, to share and to comment more about those two topics. So based on all that experience so far with the studies, we, we decided that it was a good idea to, to give this opportunity, the, to offer this, this test to the patients. And that's why we release EMBRACE. But we release EMBRACE as a non-invasive test to prioritize, prioritize the embryo transfer. At the moment, we are not considering EMBRACE as a substitute of PGTA because we, we still need more, more studies. I mean, we know it's working and we are, we are, um, how, which is the word? We are okay with the results and we are comfortable, sorry, comfortable was the word, with, with uh, what we have observed, but to be able to compare and to di directly say that the P is best than PGTA, we still need more confirmation. So, we, we think this can this can be an option to some patients and because it's a non-invasive solution uh, it can reduce the number of cycles so the time to achieve a pregnancy and it avoids uh, the biopsy it can reduce the clinical cost and it's another opportunity to some patients that uh, for example in some countries where the biopsy is not allowed this can this can give them some a chance to test the embryos as I, I was saying previously, it's not a substitute of PGTA. So at the moment we have observed that the different centers are using it or are considering different types of patients for embrace. So uh, some, in some cases they, they are offering it um, for, for good responsers uh, or to, for example, the egg donor program and explain infertility. So people without a PGTA indication. But some other centers consider that um, it, it can even be used to, to patients with PGTA indication, but when they don't want to, to, 
to do a biopsy, for example, because it's not legal or because some couples don't want to have this, this risk or maybe with poor quality embryos because maybe the biopsy is going to be stressful and maybe you, you lose those samples and they are quite valuable. And, and but again, so each center is kind of uh, using Embrace to a different type of patients. And we, what we always say to us, the, the clinics that want, want to work with us and want to start using Embrace is that one of the main things that they need to think about is to whom they want to offer it. Because it's a, a prioritization system, is not a substitute of PDA. So there are a few details that are need to be considered before, before using it. So brief summary of the basic concepts. Based in our experience so far with the studies that we are, so the multi-center, for example, is still ongoing. So it's very important. Embrace can only be offered to day six and day seven embryos. Uh, it can only be offered to def uh, for deferred cycles and at the moment only for a uh, detection, not for patients with translocations or monogenic diseases. So no, it's not indicated for PTSR or PTM uh, cases. We are working to improve our protocol and be, be able to, to analyze not only aneuploidies, but at the same time translocations and mono monogenic diseases. But at the moment, uh, the results are not as good as we want. So that's why we are not offering it yet for those cases. And one important detail, although the protocol is not difficult and the changes uh, for the culture of the embryos are not so relevant, but we know that uh, the clinics need to try, need to practice, and need to be feel comfortable. And that's why we are always asking to the centers that before they, they are able to send clinical cases for embrace, they need to perform a validation. And this validation is, a, is not an exam. We don't want the clinics to feel um, under pressure or we are not gonna discuss, we, we don't want you to feel that we are um, kind of analyzing all the aspects of your daily routine. No, it's not like that. We want you to feel comfortable with the protocol, to try, and, and to, to let us know what you think about the protocol, if you have any suggestion about what to improve, because initially we, we were working with a, a only one type of protocol, for example, with conventional incubators, but once we started working with, um, not only in the studies, also to offer to the clinics and to the patients, different centers have been made, making some suggestions and, and some of them are very good and, and we have tried and they work. So we are kind of making it more flexible uh, and, and that's what we want, to communicate, to have a good communication and, and to, to have your feedback. And regarding this, this validation, uh, our first approach for the validation was to do something similar to what had been conducted in the, in the studies. So we need to compare the media, as you are practicing and, and you, we need to compare your, your media with something. So the first idea was to compare the media with trophectoderm biopsy as in the previous studies. And in those cases, for the centers that are conducting biopsies and they feel comfortable with that, they prefer to, to work and to do this validation, we are gonna ask you to, to culture embryos following our protocol and then send us from the same embryo, trophectoderm and media and at least 10 pairs of samples. So we will analyze them and check the concordance. And we are gonna ask you to have at least 80% of concordance, more or less the obtained in the interim analysis. And it's, it's very important that you always include one negative control per patient. This is one of the options, but as some countries or some centers are, it's illegal in their place to do their biopsy. They are not familiar, they don't want to. We have also, prepare another type of validation. And in this case, the embryos are also culture. I mean, all the embryos are culture following our, our protocol. But um, on day six, what we are gonna ask you is to send us the culture media drop, but also the whole blastosis. We will analyze the whole blastosis. But in those cases, for, of course, we are talking about blastosis that are gonna be discarded. So those ones that on day six, have very poor quality, uh, you are not gonna do anything with them, no vitrification, so they are gonna be discarded, you can send them to us. 
plus their, their media. And again, 10 pairs of media hall blastocyst. We will compare. The concordance rate is the same. And it's very important to include a negative control. Some centers have already start, started doing this type of validation and the results are good. Uh, and I'm going to show you some, sorry, for, before showing already some, some, some calculations, some, some results we have obtained from the validations. This is the type of kit that we are going to provide you. Uh, we, iGenomics, are providing you this kit. So it's very similar to the one for PGTA. So you will receive the cool rack plus the gel packs, the PCR tubes where you can dispense the, the media. And, and the shipment, uh, I mean, we, are, we take care of everything, the shipment. So it's very similar, very simple. And once you want to start doing the validation, uh, we, will, we will provide this. So uh, um, here you can, you can see in the graph, some centers already started working with us. They did the validations. And in most of the cases, they passed the validation on the first attempt. But it's true that sometimes they, uh, after the first 10 pairs of samples, they don't reach the 80%. So they, we ask them for maybe five to 10 more samples and they reach the concordance. So they start working with us. I mean, but in any case, if in the first attempt, they don't reach it, it's not a problem. We always want to talk to you because we always find out which can be the problem. And it's not, I mean, they, they don't do it because they, it's not a problem of, of uh, not follow. Sometimes maybe the, the centers decide to change something and because they consider it's a good idea and, and it, does, it doesn't work. And, and when we review the protocol with them, they tell us, and as we have plenty of experience with the protocol, we, we know things that work and things that don't work. So that's why, for example, uh, the freezing of the samples is quite important, but we always ask to freeze the samples at minus 20 degrees. Some of the centers, for example, decided to freeze it at minus 80 because they thought, okay, this is going to be also good. But for example, freezing this, the media at minus 80 is bad because the DNA is more fragmented. So you are going to have worse results and, and more non-informative results. But this is something that we want to, we always like to discuss with the clinics. And also, uh, as I said, no, most of the case of the centers work it with conventional incubators, but some of them are working now with embryoscope, with time labs. You can see that the concordances are quite good, so no problem with that. Both types of, of incubators can be used. And also, types that with the types of validation, you can see the concordance between trophectoderm and media is good, but even with the, it's even better with the, with, for, the, for the whole blastocyst. And we already have quite a, a big number of samples. So you can decide, you can also go mix and, and do a validation with few pairs of trophectoderm media and few pairs of whole blastocyst media. Up to you. We uh, will already have some, some clinical information from those embrace cases. You can see here at the moment we have uh, analyzed more than 260 cases and, and those are kind of few um, interesting details. For example, for the indications, as you can see, very, very diverse for um, repetitive implantation failure, mater advanced maternal age, ovum donation, none. And we already have uh, some pregnancies and even one healthy newborn. In, in Brazil, in this case, so it's working, and 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 we are, but we are always collecting all the information because we want to to learn more and to be able to to share all this information with the people interested. And finally, the one very important detail: what about how is the the report for Embrace? So this is a, a the report for Embrace. Remember that this is a prioritization system. So all the media analyzed are going to have um, a diagnose and they are going to have a priority order. So for example, in this case, this is a patient with four media. Four media, they, they are analyzed and two of them are euploid. And we also have a segmental duplication and a trisomy. So depending on the, on the diagnose, if it's euploid or aneuploid, the type of aneuploidy, the number of aneuploidies, the, the euploid score, the probability of being euploid, is different. So that's why you see here that, for example, when the media is euploid, 
the probability that the whole blastocyst is euploid is quite high, it's around 80%, and it's a lot higher than when you have a single trisomy. But again, those results are based on our multicenter study. We are improving the algorithm, and, and all, as I, this is a very important aspect, all the media are going to have a priority order. So for all of them, we are going to provide you a, a number, even if it's the last one, but they all they are all available for prioritization. And what happens when, for example, you have a media that is non-informative? In those cases, there is not a diagnosis. So in those cases, what we are providing, this probability of being euploid is based in our internal data for PGTA cases. As you can see here, based on our experience so far, for example, for egg donation, we have observed that um, the um, euploidy rate is of around 65%, and this, of course, the probability of the, the euploidy rate decreases with age. So if you have, for example, a non-informative media for a patient with 43, 44 years, the probability, this probability, is going to be of around 21%. So you will always have a, a result, but in for non-informative cases, it's going to be based on the age of the patient. And okay, the last one, conclusions. So there is cell-free DNA in the culture drop where the, the media is, where the embryo is culture. We can analyze, we can obtain a diagnosis based on this, on this media. Uh, the concordance between this media and other other samples from the, the embryo is quite high, like the inner cell mass of the trophectoderm biopsy. And uh, the protocol we have, we have developed so far, it's quite robust and it can work with different culture conditions, incubators. Uh, and finally, it's a good, a good option, embraces a good option for, for centers, patients that don't want to, to biopsy their embryos or cannot do that. So um, this is it for the moment. Uh, I have included here the, the email from, from the Embrace team. So I'm going to be happy now to, to, to answer all the quest questions you have. But even if, if there is something that later on you, you want to ask, you can write us and we will be happy to, to answer. Okay. And that's it from, from me for, for the moment. Thank you so much, Dr. Luis, for the presentation. We have some questions. Uh, first of all, Farah is sending regard, uh, your regards to you. Uh, first question <laughs> first question is, is it possible to use non-invasive tests with small volume of culture media? Yes, I mean, um, we are, uh, based on our experience, uh, clinics where culture in the embryos normally in 20, 30 microliter volume. And in our protocol, we are we are asking to culture the embryos from day four onwards, only on 10 microliters of media. That's that's for conventional incubators. For time lapse, we can increase it a little bit more until 20, more or less. And it's as we decrease the volume, some of the centers are afraid at the beginning, but uh, the results are very good. So at the end. Let's say, for example, that you have a conventional incubator, so you are going to culture the embryo from day four till day six in 10 microliters, and later on you are going to send us eight to nine, and that's what we are going to analyze, and it's going to work. And for, for time lapse, you are going to culture in around 20 microliters, and we are going to analyze between 15 to 18, and it's going to be good, like that. Great, thank you. Uh, regarding the time of culture, you change culture media on day four, then you add the embryo in fresh 10 L media until day six, then you take the media for analysis. Yes. Just to confirm my understanding, that was a comment, I believe. Yes, yes this is, um, we tried in the first uh, manuscript in 2018, we work in a different timing, day three, day five, and most of the studies that I show at the beginning, they they were working three to five, four to six. So they, they were trying. Everybody has been trying. And the point is that something very important for from related to our, our embrace test is that it's totally non-invasive. 
So uh, we are not going to ask you to vitrify the embryos in any point, to do assisted hatching, nothing. You are not going to do any type of extra manipulation. And that's why if you are working in uh, non-invasive, pure non-invasive conditions, from day four till day six is the best timing for, for the, the embryo to be in this new drug. Uh, if in some case you even reach day seven, it's okay. But we have observed that day four till day five is not enough, mainly for, for non-invasive, uh, this non-invasive culture. Now, for example, we are, we are doing other tests. And, and for example, if you have, if you vitrify the embryo, the, the timing can be different. But if you don't do anything and you don't want to do anything, four to six is the best moment for culture. That's great, thank you. Um, I think that there's one more question, but it's the amount also, It's uh, I think it's duplicated. The amount of 10 yield media will be enough for analysis. I think you have attended this question before, yes. Uh, okay, that's it. I think that was the last question. Okay. Um, anyone has any question, please. You can send it to the email shared by Dr. Luis, or you yeah. can... Yes, wherever they want. Out. All the information they want, the manuscripts published, um, inform whatever they, they want to know, we are very happy to, to, to reply and to share with them. And if in the future they want to have an, another meeting, we'll be happy to, to do it. I mean, the Embrace team is not only me. Uh, we are four people, my supervisor, Carmen Rubio, and my colleague, my colleagues, Lucia and Carmen. But, so we all four will, will help you on that. Thank you so much. Uh, doctor, I think we have two more uh, questions or comments, okay. if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. the, media in, the media in the culture dish of the embryoscope plus somehow pooling, would not that affect the result? Can you repeat it, please? Because I, I, I missed some, some part. I, I couldn't hear properly some part of the question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the media in the culture dish of the imperioscope plus somehow pooling, would not ah. that affect the result? Yes, yes. very good point. Sorry. Uh, I, then, I then stressed before. For embryoscope plus, the, the dish has connected wells. So in this case, this is a type of, of dish that cannot be used at the moment for embrace because as the wells are connected, the media is shared between the different, the different embryos. So at the end, what we are analyzing is not actually the, the DNA released by only one. But a vitro life was, we, we have been in contact with vitro life and they, they have been working on that. And I think at the end of this month in the SRA meeting, they wanted to present a new dish for Embryoscope Plus that has individual wells. So once they, they offer this option, this can, be, this can be used for Embrace. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Is this analysis only for PGTA? I think that's a comment or? Yes, yes, at the moment, at the moment um, we have been, I mean, we are, we are still working with the, with the size of, because uh, our main goal at the moment was non-invasive PGTA. And we are working to, to develop and to be able to also analyze translocations and monogenic diseases. But the results are not so good so far. So that's why we don't want to offer it yet. So that's why if, um, if the patient has translocation or, yeah, or monogenic disease, Embrace is not is not available at the moment. Let's see in the future. Hopefully in the future, yes, but at the moment it's only for an LPDs. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and thank you so much, Dr. Luis, for your presentation and your time for taking all the questions. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Thank and you. Thanks, thanks again to all the attendees for, for their interest and their time. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. Bye-bye. You too. See you. Take care.